This should be the first file you run when you get your laser up and running. You're a brand new laser owner. Congratulations. You're on your way to creating some awesome projects. You might have already cut a shape or engraved a image. Everything looks good, but how do you make sure that you're running it at the optimal speed and power? Here's how. You run a test pattern. Now test patterns are built into a lot of pieces of software right now, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up and give you some recommendations on doing this for the first time. For this video, I'm gonna show how to set up a test pattern in Xtools XCS. They're proprietary software. They have a system built in to run test patterns that will automatically generate for you. A lot of other pieces of software also do similar things. I might create some follow-up videos to show how to do that for other pieces of software like Lightburn, but for this one, we'll be using the Xtool S1 and showing you how to do this. To start with our test pattern, we're first going to choose a shape. Now, theoretically, you could choose any shape and make that your test pattern. Uh, depending on what shape you choose, you actually might be introducing a longer time element into your test. So to keep things simple for right now, I'm simply going to choose rectangle. If you want to create a proportional shape, meaning that it is the same width compared to height, if you hold shift, you should be able to create a proportional shape. So that should be a perfect square all the way through. And if I check up here in my settings, 21.88, 21.88 for the width and the height. So I know that that is the same size. Next, I'm gonna go up here to array. And notice you have a couple different options for array. So if I wanted to create a grid of these squares just by themselves, not really new task pattern, I could do that by clicking on grid array. And I guess set the number of columns and rows and set up the spacing. If I wanted to do a grid of things all at once, you can also set up a circular array, which will create a basically a circle of that same object. This part is actually pretty critical depending on the test that you want to run. Now I want to run an engrave test, which means I need to set this object to engrave first right here. Otherwise, it's going to stay as score. And a score is basically just outlining the shape. And that's basically it. And that's not the test I'm interested in right here. So I want to engrave. And that should fill in the shape. Once you have that completed, you go to array and choose material test array. And here is where you're gonna be setting your minimum and maximum for the power and speed. You're gonna possibly want to change this depending on what laser you have. I'll be running this test on the Xtool S1 with a 20 watt laser. If you have the 40 or the IR, you're gonna to wanna to modify these settings. I can't make recommendations for those at this time because I do not have those modules. Once I have those modules, I will try to publish a follow-up video or post settings on my Patreon as kind of a, an update for that. But with the 20 watt, I have a decent idea of the range that I want for my power and speed. And personal preference, I don't usually like running a laser, at least especially for engrave at 100%. Um, so I'm gonna do my max at 80. For my cat test, it'll be set up differently. But for my engrave, I'm gonna have my max at 80 for power and my minimum for 20. And the reason I'm changing it to 20 is I think 10 might be a little bit too light and I'm not sure it's even worth my time trying to see how light of an engrave I can get. Um, I guess there might be some situations where you might want that if you're trying to create kind of like the, a ghost of an image for whatever reason. But for this test where I'm trying to see what the optimal engraving speed and power would be, uh, I think 20 and 80 is gonna be the best for that, for the 20 watt laser. As far as max speed, I think 400 max speed is going to be fine. Minimum of speed, I'm going to run at 10. I think that should be okay. That means that my extremes are 20 and 400 and 80 and 10. And the 80 and 10, the max power and uh, minimum speed is one that I think you have to watch out for the most because this is where you're probably going to get the most potential burning. And with those extremes, I think I'll be okay. It'll burn the material a little bit but I ultimately think it'll be fine. Once you have those values set and decided on, you can choose the number of columns you want. So if you want more steps in between each test, you can add more columns and more rows. I think five by five is perfectly fine. 
if you really are trying to find that diminishing return in terms of real optimal speed and power, you can. But I'm okay um, with this. If I see that I need to go like a value in between, I can kind of estimate where that might be. And I think the spacing is fine as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And here is my generated test pattern. Now if I want, I could run it simply like this and it'll come out fine. But I like making one additional adjustment because it's gonna make it easier for some readability items. So right now when you click here, this is grouped all as one object. I am going to, and once again, this is not required. This is a personal preference of mine. I am going to ungroup. So I can select these individually now. And these are editable text. So if you want to change what this says, in fact, I think I'm gonna change it right now. I'm gonna call this wood engrave S1 test. And I'm going to change the size a little bit. I like that a little bit better. The text for speed and power are fine by me, but I need to make another adjustment as well. And I'm pretty sure this is the way XES is going to process this. So I'm gonna change something. As of right now, this is editable text. And my concern is that when this runs, it's gonna go and run and scan and engrave each individual letter at once. And I don't think that is going to be time efficient in this case. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm going to mark this to engrave. So I want that to be engraved in, and I think it was 50, 150 as their, their recommended speed of power for this. And I'm also going to weld this. Now this operation right here, what this does is it takes the text and basically turns it into an object. So once I click there, I'm no longer able to edit the text. So when I click on it, I can change my power and speed settings, but I can no longer change the text and creates it as a singular object. And I'm gonna do that same thing for these other items as well. And also for the power and speed. Once again, this is my personal preference. Um, this is not some kind of random thing that I just decided on. And that is because other times that I've done this and not changed it, the text can be hard to read sometimes, depending on the overall size that you're going to be engraving this at. And I like doing a standard size of about five by five for this test. That way I'm not using too much material. It's still um, large enough to be readable and useful for my purposes. But over time, you will figure out your own preferences and do what works best for you. And I'm gonna set all of these to 50 by 150. And now all that should be set. And also one thing to check before you start doing this is double check to make sure that your settings have been retained for each of these individual squares. So when I click on this first square right here, I should see a speed of 400 and a power of 20. And that's what I see right here. So all that should be automatically set because of your settings that you chose during the array setup. And we're almost done. So what I like to do here is I'm also going to be cutting this out. So I'm going to set my preferred size here, which is going to be 127 millimeters by 127, which is going to come out to five inches by five inches for Imperial. And then I will take all of this and I will Scale it down. Make sure that you're scaling proportionally here. So however this is set up, I'm holding shift. I'm not worrying about this anymore because this was auto-generated by XCS. But I'm just holding shift. And I'm scaling down until it nicely fits in my little test area here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a, I'm gonna leave a little bit of breathing room around the edge here. 
and then I'm going to set up my cut, which is going to be a power of 10, nope, power of 100, and a speed of 10, I believe, is the preferred for that. And there we go, there is our test pattern. I could take that out to the laser. Actually, I'll be doing this in a couple of minutes. I'll engrave this. And it should give me a good indication of what the optimal speed and power is going to be for engraving on this one specific material. Now, keep in mind a couple of different things here. So one is that not all material is the same. So I'm going to be using three millimeter basswood, but I also have three millimeter Baltic birch. I also have three millimeter uh, walnut plywood. And each of those are going to produce a little bit of a different result. Because I'm doing this with a three millimeter thickness in mind, I could probably use this test pattern on all three, but I should probably run it on all three to see what the different results are. So for instance, walnut plywood is a little bit darker. So, you know, the light ones probably aren't going to show up as much. I might need to make some adjustments to this test pattern in the future, but it'll be good to have. I actually like having a collection of the different test patterns when I'm going to start a new job. And it will get me a lot closer to my starting point a lot faster and save me time in the long run. And once you get familiar with creating test patterns, you can also create your own custom ones like this and add other elements into it as well. Other text. Um, you can even add small pictures if you want to test multiple things at once. Although you might want this in a separate file um, altogether. I was trying to create something that was somewhat humorous and had some sort of like whimsy, I guess, um, all at once too. I don't know if I was successful in that, but this is also the case. But there is a little bit of a reason of why you might want to do something like this. For instance, these are all engraving as vector objects, meaning that they're all solid. You could also change your lines per centimeter if you need something to look a little bit more dense. But remember that images process a little bit differently. So for instance, I don't want this as grayscale. I actually want this as a bitmap mode where it converts this to dots, which is how you're going to be engraving most of your actual images anyways. And then setting your power and speed there as well. Maybe even doing a specific test file of several different images with different dot test patterns could also be very helpful. In fact, I might set one of those up on my own and I will share that through my Patreon. Once I get that set up and I'll, I'll kind of put that out in a post uh, when that's ready, hopefully within the next week, because I actually have a need for something like this. And you can run this as well. So you could customize this in any way that you want. You could choose custom shapes. In fact, let me set up another one right here, and I'll even show you how to do that really quick. So let's say I want a star is my test pattern. There is my star. I'm going to shrink it down. I'll choose engrave. I'll go to my material test array. And there we go. I have a test pattern of stars as well. This looks really cool. Um, it's kind of like a little bit of a showy piece, but you might be introducing more time into the test. Before we finish up with this part, I kind of want to reiterate a couple quick things. So one, this is for the purpose of trying to find the most optimal speed and power for your laser in the material that you're using. So you can produce the highest quality result in the best allotted time as possible. Because the alternative is possibly wasting a lot of material going back and forth between settings and wondering why you're not getting the result that you want. So it is well worth the time setting up a test pattern and doing this three or four times in different iterations ahead of time and then making notes on them for any extra thing. So whether it's the material name, maybe an Amazon code for you know the, the uh, supplier that you got it from, um, it could be any of those items. So with this set, Let's go ahead and run some of our tests. If you have not run those test files yet, I highly recommend that you do so and keep those results on hand. Make sure that they're labeled and try to run tests for all the different materials that you're gonna be using. So this was from a different laser, but still have the test file. I have one for engraving that I keep on hand and I have one for cutting. So I know the optimal speed or at least within a reasonable range. You'll see on the back side where it didn't penetrate all the way through, which also gives you a good indication of the cutting power. With the 20 watt, it doesn't cut as fast, but it will cut pretty consistently at those rates. 
and with the engrave not only does it show you how dark you'll get at different speeds and powers but also the depth if you're trying to get almost like a three-dimensional look just got to be careful you'll start burning through on some of these which is why I didn't go all the way there because it probably would have just charred completely. I didn't need to see that one. You can see where the power was high enough to where it eliminated part of the surface. And you have a better idea of where to start depending on the effect that you want. And the use of the test files have also allowed me to dial in engraving for black acrylic. If I could cut down that reflection there. Maybe I'll try to get in a little bit closer here. You see the detail on this is really, really cool. And this one was done on glass. Although the glass isn't necessarily etched, it was sprayed black. And then the laser eliminated all of the high spots and left just the black remaining. But once again, largely possible because of the test files. The difference between a good engraving and great engraving can be pretty significant sometimes. You kind of have to decide for yourself when the quality is at the point where you can say that is good enough. Your skills and your engravings will naturally get better over time as you understand your machine better and the materials that you're using. The test patterns are really meant as a really big jump start to get you within the ballpark for what is considered good. You can spend an endless amount of times looking for that tail end of diminishing returns where you can't tell the difference. But that's also a lot of time investment and a lot of material investment as well. So like I said, those test patterns are meant as a really good jump start to get you in the ballpark and then you could possibly tune from there if you feel that is needed. Ultimately, I want you to be able to do the things with your laser that you want to do and make cool stuff. A big thank you if you made it this far in the video. And as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and post those in the chat. I love answering questions and helping people on their way to making awesome things with their lasers. Uh, if you want to be part of a growing group as well, we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash geekbuilders. The group is still growing, but we have some really good people in there. Uh, they've been patrons for a little while now. If you'd like to be part of that group, go ahead and join our different tiers for joining, and there's different benefits of doing that as well. And for all Patreon members, no matter what tier, we have free files available for you for engraving, for testing, all sorts of things. I'm posting things up there every week. In fact, I'll be posting a couple uh, tonight. If you're not a Patreon member, you're kind of on the fence, you could also go ahead and check out those files that are available, although those will be available for purchase. Unfortunately, I can't put the price any lower because Patreon has a lock on that, but if you see something you like, go ahead and try it out, and maybe that'll convince you to be part of this awesome group. So, hopefully that helps. Um, I'll be coming out with some other videos shortly with other tutorial type items with the lasers. This one was specifically using the X-Tool with the XCS software, but you could take that idea of the test file and apply it to almost any software that you're using for your laser. Most have it built in now, but then you could always create it manually and use that in the future if needed. So, in the meantime, don't forget to design, make, and play, and I'll see you next time.